Ashes Town is something I've been getting a handful of requests for recently because they've obviously done a handful of things with Ashes Town since the last time I played it. And I revisited it and I decided that, you know what, it actually might make a lot of sense to actually do an Ashes Town beginner's guide. So um, before we begin, I'm just going to share exactly how you can actually access Ashes Town. It is a custom server for Ponytown, so some of this stuff is going to assume you know what Ponytown is and how... Uh, Ponytown works because a lot of the controls are basically the same minus the ability to run which we'll get into in a moment but to actually access the game itself just go into Google and type in ashes dot town and enter and it should load you into the game itself uh, once you're once you're here if you've never been here before it should have you fill in some information about uh, how old you are and different things like that uh, but for now let's actually access the game itself this is the spawn point. This is where you'll start at, you know, for the first time ever. The first thing I want to share is actually how you can run. So if you're on PC, all you have to do is hold the space bar and then start walking in a direction and it will actually make you faster. So here I am using the space bar and then here I am not using the space bar. Space bar, no space bar. So that's how you can access extra speed. Now on mobile, it's a little bit different. On mobile, whenever you're moving around and stuff like that, you should see a bubble uh, with a ring and then an outer ring. What you need to do is move the uh, bubble closer to the outer ring and then that will make you run faster than normal. Another important thing to keep in mind is you also have access to a mini-map. This isn't something like in Ponytown where it's restricted to tier 1 or tier 2 supporters and above or whatever else like that, and it's also super in development and it is also very trashy. Uh, <laughs> not to diss on Ponytown too much, but Ashtown actually has a pretty decent mini-map uh, in their game. So to access this, you can click this icon in the top left that's next to the change character icon and all that other stuff. You can also press M on your keyboard to access it, and you can also zoom out with the scroll wheel or even use the minus and plus symbols up here on mobile if you're on mobile. And of course, you can also drag and move around and kind of look at the map. As you can see, there's a lot of detail here. You can actually see where the dirt paths are. You can see where the streets are. There's icons that show you different things like, oh, here's how, here's a place I can access the party map from. Here's where I can trade. Um, here's Nitro Express Trader. Um, here's the stable. Uh, here's here's an area where I can find ghouls and NPCs and stuff like that. And then some of them don't actually really do anything, but they are still marked on here. For example, the docks. There's nothing special at docks, but it does show you, hey, here's docks, and, and there it is. There's also random camps everywhere, and they're also on the map. But again, they're not important because there's nothing there besides a nice little visual area. Um, and of course, there's uh, raiders so you can fight and stuff. And electro station again, nothing special there. Graveyards. All kinds of stuff around the map um but what we're going to focus on right now is the sewer system where we're going to talk about we're also going to talk about where the stable is and of course we're going to show you who to trade with and all that other stuff so let's go ahead and hop straight to where the stable is because the stable is of course important uh as you can see on the mini map if you ever lose yourself on the mini map by the way you can press this icon next to the the um zoom in zoom out and it should center it to on you and as you can see if i just zoom in here I am this little square. So if I start walking around, you can see this square. All you have to do is walk to the very far left of the map and you should be able to find it super easily. So here's the stable. You can access this super easily and it's gonna look very similar to the cave system in Ponytown because it's, it's basically that. All you have to do is go into this elevator and it should teleport you in. Whenever you go into the elevator, be super careful not to hold down W whenever you enter or holding up on mobile because what it'll do is you'll just end up going right back out. So just go into it and then stop and then go to the left. Honestly, I kind of hope they fix that at some point. Um, but yeah, as you can see, if I zoom out here, it is basically just an exact copy of the, the uh, cave system in Ponytown except with obviously a few visual changes like the fences and the swampy looking water and everything. Um, but before we do enter the stable, which is through these doors here, I want to share this NPC over here because this is the first NPC on our list, which is going to showcase exactly how you can get all the toys and stuff like that. Currently, I have a crow on my head, or rather, it's a raven. I have a raven on my head, but you can also uh, buy more by going to ping pong here in the cave systems. Click on him and then click on the interact with NPC icon underneath him, or you can also just press E on him and you can see a list here uh, of toys that you have haven't purchased yet 
and you can purchase them by clicking on them and then hitting buy of course and you have your total caps there in the top right of that little mini screen there the stable doesn't have too much um special about it but there are a couple npcs here that you do need to know about because they're npcs that you need to be able to sell stuff to so you can access other floors by going to either the elevators and it will ask you, oh, which floor do you want to go to? We can't go to floor one because we're already on floor one, but there's two other floors we can access to. So let's start with floor two. Floor two right away has the other NPC that we can talk to, which is Muffin Time. Uh, we can interact with this NPC. You can buy food from them, which does actually have a purpose in this in this game. You, you can heal you and stuff like that. Oh, there's pumpkins. I didn't actually know that. Um, but you can also sell your fruit and stuff like that to them as well. So I have a three pairs on my inventory right now. I'm going to go ahead and sell, um, sell all the ones I have and make a handful of money there. I also have an apple on me, um, and I can sell that apple as well. And of course, if I wanted to buy one of these things, like a banana, which I already have 20 of, I can buy it for five caps. And of course, these these things actually heal you in the game, so whenever you want to eat them, you can eat them, and it will heal you or whatever. So that's the, that's the first NPC here in the area. The other NPC is directly across the cafeteria from Muffin Time. He's just vibing over here. Um, again, you can interact with him. He has a handful of stuff. I'm not actually totally sure what this stuff is used for, if it's actually useful for anything or if it ever will be used for anything, but this is a handful of stuff that you can purchase and sell from him. So if you ever find blow torches or duct tape or wrenches somehow, somewhere, you can come up to him and you can sell it or purchase it yourself. Um, the chipped hoof, the saloon, is actually a really great way to actually find a lot of these places. So we, let's go ahead and start with the indoor of the chipped hoof. Um, because there's NPCs in here that you can trade with. Well, just one NPC. Uh, whiskey Shot. You can go over to him and trade with him. You can sell some whiskey or vodka or, you know, any of these other drinks you might happen to have. You can also buy these different drinks and stuff like that. Although, I'm not really sure why you would want to buy these because... Uh, all you have to do is go to this cabinet over here with the radio on top of it and click on it and you can just take any of these drinks you want for free, place it down on a, on a, on a table and drink it and consume it or whatever. You can't put them in your inventory and, uh, uh, and you also cannot drop them because it's not a purchased item. It's something that you basically just took out of the cabinet. Um, I guess that's just their, their special way to uh, balance that a little bit. You can also grab some mugs from here and click on this ca this uh, barrel here and get a mug filled uh, filled with drink that you can actually consume up to three times and slowly get drunk on. So if you ever do get drunk um, by drinking too much, um, you can also just simply go to the cabinet, access a water, and place down a water, and then pick up a water and drink the water. And it, and it will not only heal you slightly, but it will also make the drunkenness effect slowly fade off a little bit quicker and faster. So again, the, the chip hoof is a great way to know where the other NPCs are that you can trade with because directly above it, if we follow this path over here, if we just keep going up here, we'll run into another trader that's also super important to, to know about because his trades are super important. You'll see the gun sign. This, this random griffin here is not important. This guy over here is important, Nitro Express. If we click on him, we can actually buy items such as boards, cleavers, laser ray guns, um, other random guns, Molotovs, grenades. Currently in the game, as of recording this, um, guns and Molotovs and grenades and things like that don't have any use or purpose. Eventually, I'm assuming they will, um, but currently the only weapons that actually work are melee weapons such as such as like a cleaver or, or, or a board or whatever else like that. Something else to keep in mind that's super, super important is this trader will his trades will change throughout the day or at random times and stuff like that. So if you come up to him and you're like, oh man, I don't want a cleaver or any of these guns because they're useless right now. I'm just going to ignore him, ignore him from now. Um, if you come to him in a few hours or the next day or something like that, the trades might be completely different. So just keep that in mind and come to him every now and then if you are looking for a new weapon or if you're trying to collect all the weapons or something else like that because his trades do change. And this is also true for some of the other traders that we're about to go to. Once you leave from him, another way to easily find this other person is to just immediately go to the right and just keep going to the right. Maybe zoom out a little bit. Oh, here's a cap on the floor. Um, just keep going to the right and eventually you'll run into the other trader, which is right over here. He even says trade on his big banner. That's cool. He also has a little dog too, if you like dogs. Um, but we can trade with him. He has things like bandages, potions, um, clipboards, lanterns, menthols, which are the menthols are a drug 
I'm, I might actually buy one of those real quick and just just to, just to show it to you. You can buy some drugs from him, uh, sell some drugs to him, which you can find randomly and stuff like that. His trades also change, as far as I know. They should they should change every now and then as well. So keep that in mind as well. Okay, that was the last trader. So let's actually talk about the sewer system because the sewer system is also pretty cool. Um, if you go onto your map and then just go to wherever you are, there's all kinds of different sewers here. So there's one pretty close to me. So if I just leave that and come towards it, should be right over here. You can you can find these all over the random all over the place and random places. This is kind of a pseudo fast travel system. So if we come in here, we'll enter a new map, which is you know of course the sewers, um, and you can do all kinds of things like jump in the sewer um, into the sewage where you will slowly die, um, which is one of the many different ways to die. Um, there's these weird looking rooms that if you go into will teleport you to the bottom half of the map and there's ladders all over the place with um, plaques next to them that will tell you where you're gonna pop out at so if I come up to this I'm gonna be next to the graveyard um, if I go to oh this dude randomly pops up too anyway this one over here there's the electro station so if I come up right here boom I'm next to the electro station right there yep there it is right above me the electro station. That's not the electro station. What the hell? <laughs> Did it not bring me next to the electro station? Oh, well, it is kind of close to it. It probably should say raiders or something because... Oh, they killed me. Um, <laughs> they killed me while I was in my map. And you respawn when you die. Um, which is fine. Or you can go to the main menu. So something else in the stables that is actually important that I forgot to make notes on is the doors. There's a lot of doors like this one here and, you know, of course, this one over here. Oh, and a little, 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 little bitty kitty cat. A little, little bitty kitty cat. He doesn't do anything special, but he does walk around and stuff. Anyway, um, the doors, uh, to access these, all you have to do is walk up against it and then just boop the actual panel itself. And it should open. It stays open for a few seconds and you should be able to come through. You can also click it or tap it and it should open as well. So that's how you can access uh, different areas and stuff like that. They're not actually locked locked or anything like that. You can just easily access them. So just keep that in mind whenever you're in the stable at any point in time. Now, another thing to keep note of as well is the party island works completely differently in Ashes Town than it does in Ponytown. For example, there's multiple different ways to actually get to your party house or your party island. Um, from from the main island, um, but there's also um, building that is actually different as well. So if you actually want to go to your party island, all you have to do is go to these docks over here and go onto this boat, and you should be able to go to the island. Look, there's even a little special sign here that if you click on, it tells you how to do it. Um, to find this location, of course, you can find it on your map. So it is currently right over here. It's going to be a little boat, and it's actually going to show a house on top of it that says Party Island. It's also very close to, to the Saloon Whiskey Shot Trader um, Saloon. Um, there's also other places all over the map that show a house icon that will actually take you to your party house and stuff like that. So that's one of the, the cool things about this is that you can actually go to your house in multiple different ways. But to get to the island, this is this is one of the easiest ways. Just hop onto your boat and boom, there you are. You're on your island. You actually can't build on the outside. You can put a, you know, like a campfire or an unlit campfire. Um, but you can't actually really do anything else on the outside besides role play and look around or whatever. You can also access your toy stash from here as well. But the inside is where things get a little bit different. You can actually build on the inside. You can't build on the outside. That's super important to know. There's also no build menu like there is in Ponytown. Instead, you have to just simply scroll forever on the wheel until you find what you're looking for. Um, and there's different things that allow you to, to move things around and stuff like that. So Another thing to keep in mind as well is if you ever do press F or G or anything like that to actually grab like a campfire or whatever, which by the way, you can place campfires on the main island as well. So if I want to put this one here, I can just do that. It's kind, it's somewhat restrictive on where you can place them because of course it doesn't want you to place them on top of players or in certain in certain areas and stuff like that, like in front of the saloon door so you can't access it. It's, it's obviously a little bit finicky, but you can place them on the outside. One thing to keep in mind though is if you ever do have a hammer or a, a, a tool that you know you build with on the main map or something and you're trying to drop it, you can't just press the drop icon. Instead, you have to use slash remove slash RRR or slash RM if you actually want to remove it. Um, you also cannot put it in your inventory or anything like that, which I guess kind of makes sense. Um, but the only way to actually get rid of your shovel, your hammer, your broom, whatever, is to type in slash RRR or RM or any of those other ones that I mentioned just now. 
This is because the, the game actually has its own inventory system. If you press Q on your keyboard, you can access it. Um, there's also a little arrow over there next to the chat, which if you click it, it will open up your inventory. And there's also a box here, which can show you an expanded inventory, uh, which allows you to access different things that you may have picked up, such as a scythe or something, which you can use by pressing E or uh, the icon over here on the right if you're on mobile um, with these if you if you're holding something like a scythe or something like that and you actually do press the drop item, item icon it will actually physically drop it on the ground so it's important to keep in mind that if you have something valuable you don't want to drop it just don't do that um, so for example this uh, spoiled pizza uh, I'm going to equip this spoiled pizza and then I'm going to drop it right there on the ground and now it's just there forever until someone walks over and picks it up and now it's in my inventory. So that's how you can pick up things as well. There we go. So if we come across this little bridge here, maybe gra let's grab a scythe or something like that so we have a weapon to actually use. We can actually kill some of these zombies. There's a ton of them right now. Um, I'm not sure why there's so many right now, but there's just a ton right now. I believe I believe more do spawn at night. So I guess maybe that's maybe that's why, because it's, it's currently night. You just got to whack them and hope you don't die. You will you will heal over time. Of course, you can heal by eating the fruit and stuff like that. But honestly, the combat can be kind of difficult. So <laughs> um, keep that in mind as well. You can also fight the cockroaches. They usually they usually take a lot of damage um, and die super easily. But they don't actually drop anything. Other NPCs such as these guys. These guys will actually drop stuff. So let's just kind of sit over here for a second and try to heal. I don't think these guys heal, do they? You just whack them, then just jump in the water and heal, and then come in back in and just whack them. It's it, the, the NPCs seem kind of strong, honestly. I think it probably could use a little bit of rebalancing. Um, but yeah, if you do successfully kill one of them, oh wait, actually, I think I just found a way to hit them without them being able to hit me. Ah, oh, see, they dropped an apple or something. Did I pick it up? Yeah, they dropped a lime and an apple, and I picked both of those up. Ah! Oh, I died. R.I.P. You don't actually lose anything by dying, but it is somewhat annoying, so just keep that in mind. Because, obviously, see, as you can see, I'm, I'm, like, way over here now, so that's a bit annoying. Um, but yeah, that should cover all of the basics of Ashes Town, what you can do and everything like that. Um, you can find random money on the ground as well. So if you don't want to collect stuff from NPCs, like by killing them and um, trading them to the different traders and stuff like that. You can also find caps and stuff like that just randomly on the ground to sell. Uh, or, I mean, well, you don't really sell money, do you? So that, that should cover all the basics as far as I know. If there's anything I missed, please let me know in the comments below. And if you want something more like an advanced guide to Ashes Town or something like that, let me know as well. And if maybe if you think I should do a beginner's guide to Ponytown as well, maybe, maybe comment that or something too. But for now, that should cover all the basics of Ashes Town and you should be ready to hop in and you should be able to know what's going on whenever you actually join the game and why things are slightly different and stuff. So yeah, please do consider liking, subscribing, sharing, and doing all of those wonderful things like that because when you do wonderful things like that, not only do you get access to wonderful content such as this, but you also get to become wonderful yourself. And I think we all want that. So do those wonderful things and until next time, stay wonderful. So of course, that's how you can run, but to where, where can, like, but, 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 but. <laughs> another super important thing to keep in mind that is obviously why you missing me? <laughs> when another important thing to keep in mind is.